just to go over that story editor one more time. Again, I'm not a big fan of it. It's really an advanced feature, but it's something you should know about. I have one last demo here for type editing, so I'll open and in chapter five, folder 19, I'm gonna open up this story editor file. Pretty simple, just a little text frame here. It says select the text frame with the black arrow, then double click the bottom middle handle on the text frame to automatically resize it. But I don't wanna do that yet, okay? When I am looking at an object in outline mode, that's when I will see that there is overset text. Okay, the problem is I don't know how much. Is there just one more sentence? Is there 12 lines of type that are getting cut off? I don't know. So I'm gonna click inside this box with the black arrow. Then I go to edit, edit in story editor. Okay, and when I look at this box, from the top, Here's all my text, and right when I get down to here, it says, but with compassion though, but with compassion though. So right here is this little gray line. That's the start of all the text that has been cut off. There was a lot of lines. I can't tell over here. You could see right here above the word match, it says overset. All this red bar right here is indicating how many lines of type are still missing in this story. So that's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is come over here. I'll click. And what I want to do is put these two windows kind of side by side. This is kind of a cool effect. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Push it over. And now I have my story editor in its own window. Okay, I can close that and do it again here. Edit, edit in story editor. So you can kind of have these two windows side by side. And watch what happens when I click here. I'm gonna take my black arrow. As I increase the size of this box, watch this gray bar. See how it starts to move? So this is telling me, move it a little further down. Whoop, you're getting close. You're getting close, but move it a little further down. Oh man, you got two and a half more lines. Move it down a little bit more. There we go. Okay, no more overset text, no more red bar, no more gray indicator line. So that's kind of a fun thing to work with. I don't know when I would really ever use it because the easier way to deal with overset tax instead of having two windows open on your screen, I'll go to edit and undo. Edit, undo, edit, undo, undo. There we go. If I see that there is overset text, I'm not going to do all that guesswork. I'm just going to click on it, go to the bottom middle button and double click. That'll take care of it. So, the lesson with this demo is there's so many design features in Adobe InDesign. Your head will explode if you try to memorize and try to incorporate everything this program does. Don't bother. You can get all the work done in a very minimal amount of effort and a minimal amount of time. You don't need to use every single advanced feature. It'll just drive you crazy. Story editor, I mean, that's great but I didn't need it for editing text. I would maybe use it for tracking changes like I showed in a previous tutorial, but not just for resizing a text frame. That's ridiculous. Have a whole other window open when I could just double click a button. So be aware of that. Try out the features, get comfortable with the ones you really love and get really good at the ones that you really love. You don't have to incorporate everything to be good in this program, okay? So I'm gonna close that up. That should conclude my chapter on dealing with just text editing here in Adobe InDesign. We'll move on to another topic.